So it's a pretty nice day out today. Sun is shining, not too hot. Workspace here needs a little bit of organizing. Outside's kind of busy in the morning here, but not too bad. So I've got my belt sander slash grinder, sand cloth annulus grinder. I don't even know what annulus means. <laughs> you know? Name is Shi Trim. I guess we don't need vowels. But if you look at the Chinese, it's actually pronounced Si Tang. So I don't know how they figured that one out. So these are the good belts, uh, these red ones here, and I've got 580s and 5120s. I was going to try to find one that's a uh, higher grit, but I just didn't get a chance yet. And these belts here are better because they're seamless on the outside. The cheaper ones have a seam on the exterior, at least according to the engraver. The motor on this is a uh, half horsepower. That's the scissor I made last, working well. So right off the bat, a tool that's boxed like this doesn't inspire a lot of confidence to me. I don't know why, can't really explain why, but it just reeks of cheapness. They packed it well, I'll say that much. So I paid about 250 US dollars for this machine. That doesn't include the extra belts and the belt size is 4 by 36 inch. This is exactly how I used to open my Christmas Day presents when I was a kid. So my initial impression is so-so. And by the way, it weighs about 35 kilos, so it's pretty heavy. The belt that came with the machine is 100 grit, and you can see that seam that it has on the outside, and that's obviously not good. But the belt is neither here nor there. What really is kind of worrying me is this table. It's nowhere near an alignment. It's not 90 degrees to the belt, and there's a, the gap is very uneven, too. You can even see that probably on this video. There's a set bolt in the back that, when loosened, allows me to tilt this bed. This knob here adjusts the tracking by adding or taking away pressure. You've got to use some muscle to lift that lever, but changing the belt seems very simple. I've never used one of these, but I would say that the motor sounds good. The table is just really irking me, but I'm going to use it a few times before I make any adjustments. So here's the bearing razor that I was working on a few videos back. I'll sand on this a little and see how it works. That drive wheel seems to be aluminum with a thick rubber exterior, so that seems to me to be pretty good. I can definitely tell that having a seam on the exterior of the belt would not be good for precision work but for rough sanding or grinding like this, it's okay.
way that table is, I would never dare to hold it in that position. So my initial feeling is, if this was $100 less, if it was $150, I would have no complaints. But now I know things have gone up in price a lot, so I guess I shouldn't complain. $250, if I get two years use out of it, then that's fine. I like using this though, and I can see myself being on the lookout for a higher end model, maybe a used one if I can find it. Having the specs just loosely stuck on like that is really cheesy. The engraver's older version has one riveted on to the motor housing. Also, I don't like when they spray paint or maybe this is powder coating over everything. These screws are really cheap. The engraver's is much more high quality. And it's surprising to me that I thought that was a spring on the top one there, but it's just three spring washers together. And I can just see with my eyes that where that table attaches is not 90 degrees. I'll probably have to use this belt sander to sand that. Ah, the irony. The thing is this top tracking wheel or whatever it's called is plastic. So that's pretty cheesy to me as well. And the platen there has been spray painted over. So that's also pure cheese. I went later to the engraver and I looked at his and his tracking wheel is also plastic though. I'll probably wind up replacing these screws and the spring washers with an actual spring. So I used one of these better seamless belts, this 80 grit one, and I was really pleased it was much better than the one that's on the machine. And the one that's on the sander, you can see I put some green rouge on it. It already wore down so quick. And the engraver said it's really good for honing and especially polishing. Once you wear down a belt, put some polishing compound on it and you'll be surprised. I could never get this knife sharp. But just a couple of passes with this machine and lo and behold, it's sharp. And you can see I've got the beginnings of a base on it that I'm making there. I used it like this. And remember, this is just a 100 grit worn out belt with some polishing compound on it. I did nothing else to this knife. Well, paper is not a stake, but it seems to be sharp. My optimism is rising a few points. So I completed my simple base. Yes, I'm going to use it with a small stool. That's just how I operate. And I've got it on casters because I need to be able to roll it around. I've got these mats beneath it. One is anti-vibration and one is anti-slip. And you can see the casters have brakes and that really helps. And if anyone has any suggestions about the care and maintenance of this kind of a tool, let me know. And another plus of having it on casters is I can turn it around to use that slack side. And I think that would be particularly helpful when I work on hammers. By the way, I paid $3 per red belt, which I think is pretty good. And later I found this 400 grit one, this black one, and this one cost me about $6. The engraver had warned me off the black ones, but I think this is a high quality one. It's double A in this Eagle brand. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you guys next time.